Okay, I think that's just about everybody logged in there. So um, um, I'd like to welcome you all here to uh, the third webinar in our Solace Promising Data Analysis webinar series. My name is Andrew Granado. I'm a statistician here at Statistical Solutions. And uh, I'm here with my colleague Owen Murphy. Um, and uh, today we'll be talking about the propensity score matching method uh, in Solace. Um, this is a quite an informal session. Um, feel free to ask questions throughout uh, the whole webinar and just use the uh, text box provided. Um, uh, there, we'll also be taking a short break in the middle and uh, have time at the end for uh, questions and discussion points. Um, if you think the screen is too small, if you need to zoom in or zoom out, um, there's, there's an option there in the um, go to meeting or go to webinar. Um, window there. Uh, it's either at the bottom right or the top left and you can uh, just uh, pick the um, select the the arrow I think and you can reselect the size and zoom in or zoom out. Also um, if there's any issues with the audio or if you can't understand me please don't hes hesitate to uh, let us know. Just um, again send a message through the text box and uh, we'll try and get a sorted for you as quick as possible. So I think we'll get moving there with the uh, the webinar. Um, just to give an overview of the uh, the presentation today, um, what I'm going to do is a quick recap of the basics from the previous two webinars. Um, just talking about uh, the benefits of multiple imputation, defining missingness, missing data patterns, and also the past two methods, predictive model based and the how robust distance um, matching. Methods. I'll run through the propensity score method, the methodology behind that. I'll run through a quick working example and post imputation analysis to Solus, and then we'll have some time for discussions and questions at the end. Okay. Oh, I just want to mention as well that we were recently at the um, International Biometric Society meeting um, in Washington, D.C. a couple of weeks back, uh, ENER. Um, it was great to be there. It was great to meet a lot of people. If uh, any, any of the attendees were there and we talked to you, that was great. It was great to see people. Um, uh, we always love talking and interacting with people and uh, people who are interested in multi-imputation and using it in their analysis. Um, just to recap, so um, what are the implications of missing data in your survey or in your database? Um, firstly, you get a loss in power um, due to reduced sample size if you're doing a, a complete case analysis. Um, also, there's potential bias in your data if there's a reason. <coughs> excuse me, if there's a reason behind why there's a missingness in your data. Um, also, um, the sample that you've taken may not be representative of the population uh, that you're trying to survey due to the um, due to the missing data in your data set. Um, previously, we also defined the different types of missingness. So there's uh, three types mainly. Um, missing completely at random where the um, the uh, the reason for the missingness is completely independent of any of the um, observed data in in your database or in your study um, missing at random is where the missingness depends solely on the observed um, portions of your of your database or your data set and then not missing a random is where the missingness depends completely on the missing data itself. Um, there's also a, a separate version of uh, our more advanced version of missing at random called covariate dependent missingness where um, the missingness depends solely on the observed values of the covariates alone and not including the observed parts of the outcome variables. We also went on to describe the missing data pattern and we can break it down into um, to uh, two main sections, monotone and non-monotone patterns, where uh, a monotone missing data pattern um, uh, occurs when the variables are ordered from left to right such that the variable um, to the left is at least as observed as all the variables to the right of it. So for example, if variable A is fully observed and variable B is sometimes missing, then A and B form a monotone pattern, or if A is only missing if B is also missing and A and B um, then A and B form a monotone pattern. Um, these kind of patterns mainly occur in um, longitudinal studies where you have people dropping out um, say after the first or second um, 
measurement date and uh, they don't return um, for the follow-ups. Um, also benefits, I suppose just to mention as well, benefits to the overall benefits to using multi implementation is that you can produce unbiased estimates in your analysis and it strives to preserve the relationship between the outcome and the, and the covariates, uh, outcome variables and the covariates and also um, you can produce correct or even more accurate variance for your estimates and for the, the mean um, of the sample that you've taken in the population. Um, okay, so also we also talked about in the previous two webinars the predictive model based method um, or um, the predictive model based method employs ordinary least squares regression when modeling um, when modeling um, continuous and ordinal variables and then it employs discriminant imputation methods um, modeling when um, when dealing with categorical and nominal variables. We also discussed and had an example of Mahalanobis distance matching where we calculate the Mahalanobis distance from each missing case to all fully observed cases and then we create donor pools to randomly select on based on the the closest cases uh, to the missing one. So um, if this is the first time you're joining our webinar series or if you've just missed the previous webinars, um, <clears throat> you can catch uh, all the previous webinars on our on our SOLUS website, www.solusmissingdata.com and the webinars and uh, also associated white papers and, and various documentation, support documentation can be found on this website for slash resources. Okay, so then we're going to move on to what we want to talk about today. So that's the review covered. Again, if you have any questions, feel free just to pop them through the um, the text box there, and myself and Owen will be will be um, dealing with them as they come in. So um, propensity score matching. Um, essentially, uh, this is a semi-parametric hot deck method, and essentially what we do is we we want to fit a line. That bisects uh, that best bisects uh, the missing data. So, for example, here I've I've plotted uh, two fully observed covariates x1 and x2. You plot them against each other, and here we've got a lot of blue dots and a few red dots. So the blue dots represent um, observed, uh, where the outcome variable y is observed, given x1 and x2, and the red dots. Um, they denote uh, where the outcome variable is missing given x and x2. So you can see there is a cluster of missing um, data for the outcome variable where we've observed x1 and x2, the uh, covariates. So that's where our missing data for the outcome variable has, uh, has occurred. So what we want to do is fill a line that's going to best uh, dissect the missing data this, uh, which is shown by this green line here, and essentially um, this line depend, always depends on the uh, the missing data in your in your data set, and also your fixed covariates and how they are uh, the relationship between them. So you know you can have a, a a line going through any direction essentially, and also you may have more than two fixed covariates. I'm just using x1 and x2 um, for a simple example. So you may have many directions here that you can go in. So what we do here is I'm just going to zoom in on the line there. So what we do here with propensity scoring, then once we have our we fit we fit our line to bisect the the um, the missing data, then we what we do is we project the the value onto that line for both the y the outcome variable the missing and also the observed outcome variable. So the blue and the red dots are both projected down onto the um, line and therefore we have um, a way of matching or comparing based on uh, the, the distance from each other on this line. And what we do is we use this line to form um, donor pools where essentially we form a pool of values close to the, um, the missing outcome value and these values that are close to that one on the line will be used to uh, create our uh, multiple imputations. So there's various different ways that you can create the donor pool. 
So um, there's there's the two main methods in Solus here are as you can you can select the, the subset of the C closest cases where C is just a constant and the default is set to ten. So the C, the C closest or the ten closest cases on the line you can you can select them to create a donor pool and randomly select from that donor pool to create your multiple mutations for your multiple data sets. Or you can take the the D percent the percent closest cases. So if the, the, ten, the default setting again is the top 10% closest cases to that point and use them as the um, as, as your donor pool. And in Solace as well, we use an approximate Bayesian bootstrap method to uh, randomly select from this donor pool to create the, um, the uh, imputations. Okay, so that's the propensity score um, method run through. So um, I'm just going to run through a quick example now in Solace. So I'm just going to close out of this and open up Solace here. So this is the Solace home window. And uh, firstly, you can open a new data set and um, in, uh, in manually input the, the data yourself, or you can open a previously created data set in uh, Excel. Um, all flat file formats and SAS, um, most data, data formats will be, will be provided for in Solus. You can also, we have a script language window where you can type your own actual script language to create your own calculations and it will run that for you and print the output. So you type it in here and it will come out in the lab window. We also have a set of system preferences. So before you even start doing any analysis or any data manipulation, um, you can set all the preferences for every test in uh, in this uh, in this window. So, if, say for example, in regressions, if I want to do um, for stepping functions, for example, if I want to do a stepping, and I will be doing a stepping regression in a minute. So, for for automatic stepping, I want to use a forward. I always want to use forward stepwise regression, um, and allow me to do the step by step intervention. So, save that. And now I can, it'll, it'll remember that for all my calculations that I do from now on. And then we have various help functions here too. So I'm going to open all these data sets are given in the sample data sets that come with Solace. Um, so if you want to take a trial version, you can rerun all these tests and all these examples I'm doing. So I opened up this data set MI trial. Um, as you can see here, it's an Excel file style. Um, broadsheet format where we have cells. Um, we have this is just a small data set for the uh, for the examples. We've got 50 cases and we have 11 variables where we have the, uh, the case number, symptom duration, the age of the patient, and then we have um, two measurements A and B measured at baseline one month after, two months after, and three months after baseline for both measurement A and B. So firstly, as you can see here automatically, we have some missing values in the data set. So what's the first thing we should do? You can investigate the missing data pattern and how it looks. So first thing we can do here is view missing data pattern. How Solus works is it's just a simple click and drop into what you want to use, or we also have a feature here where you can just click use all to see everything. Now what pops up is a um, a kind of a cell feature here where we have um, white cells and blue cells. The white cells represent the observed values and the blue cells represent the missing values. If you have quite a large data set, it's quite tricky to be scrolling the whole way down to see where the um, where the missing cells occur. So we also have this collapse feature which will collapse all this table down into a, a short summarized table. So what this table is on the Columns is the, the variable, and on the um, on the rows is the cases. So we have 39 cases that are completely observed. We have one case with this particular missing value. We have one case with this particular pattern, and so on. As I as I spoke previously in the recap section of my presentation, we also have this feature where you can view the monotone non-monotone pattern. So let's click view and view monotone pattern, where here the red is the monotone and the green is the non-monotone. So uh, as I said earlier, 
going from left to right, variable A, if variable A, um, if the variable on the left is at least observed as the ones on the right, it shows a Mantone pattern, such as here. Um, and how Solace deals with this when running imputations is it will impute the non-monotone um, values first, so that if you can imagine these get imputed first, then you'll have almost a full data set to use to impute the, the monotone pattern. So that's um, our investigation of the missing data. So that's how the, the missing data looks first before you start any analysis or any imputations. That's how the missing data looks. We also have a I have several plotting features, scatter plots, histograms, box plots, normal, plot, normal plots, etc. But we have this margin plot where you can also use to investigate the, the, how the missing data affects the relationship between two variables. So I'll just show you a quick one of these here. So I'm just going to plot age. It's like a scatter plot. I'm just going to plot age versus one, three months after baseline for, measure, for measurement A. So here we have a scatter plot set up where the blue um, data points represent observed K values for, for both age and measure 3, A3. Um, and the red dots on the bottom uh, x-axis here represent missing values where it's been observed for age, but we have a missing corresponding value for measure A3. Also, we have two small box plots um, here where the blue box plot shows the distribution of the observed values for age and the red box plot shows the distribution of the missing values um, for age or for the relationship between age and measurement A3. And similarly, we have it here on the y-axis. Again, this is a nice um, tool for quickly assessing missing data in the relationship between two variables um, and how missing data can be um, arising in your study. So now I'm going to move on to um, doing just a, a quick example of um, uh, doing some analysis, post-imputation analysis. So first I'm just going to do my imputation. So essentially you just click on the Analyze tab. We have single imputation methods and multiple imputation methods. So we did predictive model based on Mahalanobis. We're going to now do propensity score. And essentially, again, it's just a click and drop into the boxes, whichever one you want to drop it into. So I'm going to use as my fixed, fixed covariates. So these are the covariates that I want to use in the so-called uh, hot decking net matching method, where I want to compare people on similar symptom duration, similar age, and with similar baseline values. All these are going to go into my fixed covariates. And this is what these variables are what I'm going to use to compare people with. And then I'm going to impute then the rest of the variables here. But these are all with missing values based on this information here. You can also define how many imputations you want. In Solus, we have a maximum of 50. So you create 50 extra uh, or 50 data sets, complete data sets. And we also have several tabs here where you can define um, how you want to impute the non-monotone data points and the, mon and the monotone data points. Our solace will just do it using its default settings. Um, and again, as I described earlier in the presentation, you can define how you want to set up your donor pools. As I said, you can use the 10 closest cases, or you can use the top 10% closest cases. And again, you can set up a refinement variable, again, if you feel that some of these variables have a closer correlation with the, the missing, uh, missing uh, variables. And finally, you can set up, um, in the advanced options here, you can set up uh, a seed value. So you can rerun the exact imputation. Uh, you can reproduce the exact imputation again um, you, if you just uh, record the seed value. And you can set up various tolerance values, etc. So I'm going to run this. So we're going to do five imputations. So now I've created five new data sets. Again, it looks quite similar to the original one, except now the missing data points have been filled in, and the red ones denote the monotone imputed values, and the green values here denote the non-monotone imputed values. And if you look down to the bottom of the window here, I've actually got five tabs, one for each 
data set that I've created. So now I have five complete data sets. So we can also just um, view the imputed values. I'm going to, do a, going to do a quick scatter plot here of A3 versus A0. So this scatter plot here shows the blue data points here are the observed values and the red data points are now the new imputed values. And you can also overlay, because I was on data set one when I ran this, so this is, this is the scatter plot for data set one. I can also overlay all the rest of the imputed values. So here are all five imputed values for this one data point um, for this relationship between measure A0 and measure A3. So you can see here that the variance is quite um, representative. So now I'm just going to do some quick post-imputation analysis. I'm going to do a regression analysis. We're going to predict measure B3. So up pops a window here, and we've got two windows within this window. You've got variables in the model and variables not in the model. And now you can ask Solis to run a stepwise regression for you or you can essentially just click and drop variables in as you, as you like. So I'm going to ask Solis to do it for me, so I'm going to go model automatic stepping. And I remembered the settings I gave it at the start. I remembered that I wanted to do forward stepwise regression and give me a stepwise step intervention. So I click OK. So now it's already put measure B2 into the model. And it's asking me to click for the next step. The next variable to put in is measure B0 and that's where it stops. So we've got our R squared value measured here of 65% and we have our multiple regression equation also given over here with our um, estimates and our uh, variables in the model. Um, and this again if you look at the bottom we have a tab again here that was just for page one is data set one. We also have again we can do it again for data set two So automatic stepping, forward regression, step-by-step -step intervention. So again, in goes the, uh, B2 and B0. And again, if you, don't, if you want to force a, a, a variable out of the model, you can just click it and take it out, pick it up and drop it in. And also, when you intervene manually, it will redo the, the model for you uh, across the rest of the data, of the data sets. So model three, data set four, and data set five. So we have five data sets, five regression models. And we also have at the bottom here a combined tab, which gives you the combined results from all five data sets. So this combined um, tab gives you the multiple correlation across the five data sets and the five fits. And it also gives you the average coefficient value across the five data sets and the standard error associated with that value and also the correlations for the variables not in the model. And again, you can play around with these, uh, these models. Also, there are um, quite a lot of um, diagnostic uh, features given and, and diagnostic plotting features given um, as options in, in, in uh, Solace. I can show you. Um, it gives you quite a lot of uh, Cook's distance, for example, um, and quite a lot of uh, residual based um, analysis. So you can do, you can, you, and you can do residual plotting, etc., just to, um, to uh, investigate your, your models. So, um, so that's the end of my, uh, my, um, example in Solis. So I'll get back to my presentation here. So that was the propensity score multiple imputation in Solis. So I'd just like to say that we have, we have um, three more webinars planned for this webinar series. Um, the next webinar will be in May and you'll, uh, you can, you'll receive a, an email just about that. It's going to be predictive mean matching which is based on regression. 
We've got the combination method in June, which is the uh, combination of propensity score matching, predictive mean matching, and Mahalanobis distance methods. And then finally, to round off the webinar series in July, we'll have a sensitivity analysis uh, webinar, which kind of rounds off how you, how you should employ and um, how you should approach multiple imputation uh, in general when doing running analysis. And also, just to mention um, upcoming conferences that we'll be attending, we'll, we'll be attending JSM in San Diego this summer. And we'll also be attending various uh, smaller conferences between now and then. Um, if you'd like to meet up or if you'd like to call by the booth, um, we're, we're more than uh, happy to talk to anybody. Um, also, um, let us know what conferences you're going to um, if, if, you'd, if you'd like to meet up. And if, if we're going to be there, we'd be more than happy again to meet up. So um, that runs to the conclusion of this webinar. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for coming down to uh, to attend the, the webinar. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope you've uh, uh, you've uh, gained some information from the webinar. If you'd like to check it out, um, we've got our website is solacemissingdata.com. If you'd love have any questions or if you want any to discuss anything, my email address is andrew.granell at statsol.ie, and the uh, the, the, the phone number for our office is there. Also, if you want to get in touch via LinkedIn, um, my LinkedIn profile is via that website, linkedin.com forward slash Andrew Grinnell. We also have a discussion forum as well, solacemissingdata.com forward slash forum. So um, I'm just going to take a minute there just to look at some of the questions that have been coming in, and um, we'll hopefully have a nice uh, couple of, uh, we have a few minutes there to, uh, we have a couple of minutes to answer some questions there, so. Okay, we were just uh, looking at some of the questions and discussion points that were coming in there, um, quite a few, which is great to see. Um, we might not get around to all of them, because um, I know everybody's busy. Um, so I'm just going to go through a quick few there and um, we'll, we'll get back to everybody though um, with a follow-up email um, with an answer to their questions. Um, also this webinar has been recorded and will be put up on the website if you want to review it again, watch it again and if you have any questions again just feel free to email me at that address. Um, so one of the questions we had was what were the blue and red points on that graph? So I'll just go back up to the so, um, what I what I plotted here is two fixed covariates, x1 and x2. Say in the example I used, say for example, it was age and symptom duration. And what I plotted was um, the blue the blue dots or the blue data points represent the outcome variable measure A3 or measure B3 observed, and the red data points represent um, measure it, it B3 not observed, the outcome variable not observed. So we have observed fully the two variables that I'm plotting, but the outcome variable is not observed for these variables. That's what I was plotting there. And then we fit a line to that um, by setting the data and we project the data points onto that line. Um, some people ask why did I pick for regression in, in, the, in the example. Um, arbitrarily is the answer I just uh, wanted to use. Um, regression for the, for the given example. Again, there's, a, there's backward regression and there's other regression methods in SOLUS that you can play around with. Um, which is the preferred method of multiple imputation in this uh, in SOLUS? Um, there's five methods of multiple imputation in SOLUS um, and there's not one particular. Uh, it depends on the case. Uh, some methods are better at um, uh, estimating um, the expected value of the outcome. Other, very, other methods are better at estimating the, the variance and the covariance of the, of the outcome um, are the estimates. So it depends and that's why we also um, employed the combination method where it pulls on the strengths of three methods um, uh, and uh, it produces a more accurate result too. Um, and the final question that I'll deal with here is, the, are there any limitations to sample size in SOLUS? Um, SOLUS can handle, in 64, but as well, they can handle very, very large data sets um, and, and handle uh, multi multiply imputing very large data sets. 
uh, and very large databases. Um, and again, when dealing with with, you, with selecting fixed covariates to define your, your multiple imputation, um, it's down to the researcher's discretion on what they feel is important in the study to use as a fixed covariate to compare cases on. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll finish up there because I, I, I know everyone has to get back to work and stuff. So um, I just want to say again, thank you all very much for uh, attending the webinar. And uh, I hope you come back again to the, the other webinars. And I hope you, uh, you learned something and, and uh, that you, uh, you found this informative. So um, with that, we hope to see you next time. Goodbye.